Welcome back to Star Trek Nitpickers. I'm your host, Commander Corbo, and here's your co-host, Lieutenant William. Thanks a lot, Commander Corbo, and welcome back to Star Trek Nitpickers, everybody. So today we're talking about Perpetual Infinity, this latest episode from Star Trek Discovery. And I gotta say, I thought this was a pretty great episode. I mean, this was really taking a lot of this AI from the future, Terminator-type storyline, and doing something original with it. They were actually using the tools that they'd created in this universe in the past season and this whole season so far. They were taking this hologram communication technology and showing us what an AI from the future would do with it. And they took it a step further in this episode, actually, and that was probably my favorite thing about this episode, what happened with Leland. I mean, that added so much tension to the whole episode, and it was great wondering if anybody was going to figure out what was going on before it was too late. Um, yeah, I thought the drama built in this episode in a great way. It was one of the things that really worked about this one for me. Uh, there were some things that didn't work about it for me, but I'm going to get to those in a second. I want to talk about the signals, guys. The signals that have been leading them to the Red Angel. It seemed like the Red Angel sent these signals, but now there's this possibility that the Red Angel knows nothing about them. And it seems like I don't know, it seems to me that maybe the Red Angel is lying about that. I kind of got that feeling. Maybe there's some sort of a weird time traveler's secret involved in all of this where she's actually going through some secret plan that she can't divulge to, you know, what we think of as the people in the present. Anyways, guys, uh, yeah, there were a lot of cool things going on in this episode, and I really liked uh, Sonia San, who's playing Michael Burnham's mom. I thought she was better in the jaded, futuristic uh, side of the character than in the happy-go-lucky side that we see at first, but it was interesting to see that whole scene at first. You know, it made me think, didn't Michael talk about how her mom had been killed by the Klingons, and she remembered, you know, that it took the Klingons longer to kill her mom than her father. So how can her mom still be around if that really is her mom that we're seeing there? Anyways, guys, uh, I've actually got hail coming in here, so it seems there's, there's another ship approaching us. Let me just answer this hail real quickly. Hold on a second, guys. Hey, Will, this is future Will. I know, pretty weird, right? I mean... Wow, this is really weird. Anyways, look, here's the thing. I'm you from the future. I know, I know it's very strange, and I know you don't believe me because I actually remember having this conversation. I know you don't, but anyways, here's the thing, buddy. I gotta tell you, before we get cut off, don't pet the Alpha 177K9, okay? I've still got the bandage on my leg, all right? And, you know, if you don't pet it, I won't have the bandage on my leg. I know it seems strange, you know, I actually meant to come back in time to a point where you had just disappeared. You see, there's a time anomaly that's forming all around you right now. I know your sensors haven't picked it up yet, but it's going to pull you in, and you're going on a wild space-time adventure, my friend. It's going to be a blast. But here's the other thing i got to tell you. Really, this is more important than the Alpha K9. Uh, this is really important. The Klingon is not bluffing, Okay. I can't repeat that enough. The Klingon is not bluffing, Will, okay? You gotta remember that. That's the main reason I hailed you here. Um, hold on, I'm actually getting a hail myself, and uh, you know what? I gotta answer this, uh, but, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be back to you in a second. Hold on a second here. Hey, future Will. Wow, cool, weird. This is future, future Will, all right? I'm you from the farther future. So listen, buddy, you forgot to tell past Will to remember not to eat the Klingon gah when he goes on his trip into the future. All right, come on, you got to remember to tell past Will not to eat the Klingon gah, okay, buddy? Oh, yeah, it turns out they really do serve it alive. Okay, so listen, Will, don't eat the gah, that's true. Um, you don't have Captain Picard's stomach, buddy. Just don't try the gah, all right? It's a bad scene. Ugh, yeah, I still get sick to my stomach just thinking about it. I don't think we want to mess with the timeline too much, you know what I mean? Of course you do, you're me, right? Relax, I doubt we can really change anything anyways. Hey, where'd you get those sunglasses? Oh, hold on, I got a hail coming in here, hold on a second. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. Anyway, Will, don't eat the gah. Don't, uh, you know, don't try to pet the Alpha 177 K9. And, um, you know, really, 
the Klingon is not bluffing. Just remember that and you'll be okay. You'll have a great time. Oh, um, also, let's see, you forgot to mention that you think the way control, the AI from the future in this Discovery episode, you think the way that it's using the holographic communication technology to impersonate people might be the reason that that technology goes out of use by the time Captain Kirk becomes captain of the Enterprise. You got to put that in this video. It's, it's a good little gem to put in there. Oh, that's... How did... That's just ridiculous. I mean, look, I don't know who you are, if you're some sort of a weird Romulan-made clone of me or something, but please just get off this frequency. We're trying to do a review here, okay? So please, no more interruptions from the crazies, all right? We're trying to do a YouTube channel here. Anyway, so guys, yeah, uh, back to this episode, Perpetual Infinity. Leland's plan. Didn't it just seem a little bit cockeyed? I mean... Sure, maybe, you know, of course that wasn't really Leland, but it seems to me like Giorgio and Tyler should have realized this plan doesn't make any sense in the first place. If you're trying to prevent information from getting into the wrong hands, it doesn't make sense to make a copy of it. It makes sense to go along with what Pike's trying to do, just destroy it. So... That was a little bit strange to me that Tyler's going along with that at all. I know eventually he says, uh, hey, you know, this doesn't make any sense, but gee, it takes him a while to put that all together. So that seemed a little bit strange to me. Also, guys, I'm going to nitpick this. Uh, the whole thing about why Spock has a special connection to Dr. Burnham, it just doesn't really work for me. It seems a little bit forced, a little bit like they're saying, well, we really wanted to work Spock into this, and we didn't really have a great explanation. We couldn't find anything logical, so we just kind of did the best that we could, and it, like, almost sort of works, but, I mean, come on. Spock is a very unique and original guy, but he's the only person throughout all of time and space who could communicate with the Red Angel. That just seems a little bit too much to me. I can't really... I can't really deal with that, guys. Also, if the Red Angel knows all of this stuff about Burnham's whole life after the Klingon attack, then why didn't she know that it was a trap that they were setting up to catch her in? That just doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, she knows all of these little details. She was there for this and that event in Burnham's life growing up, but she just somehow sort of missed out on the plan to deceive her and trick her into this little bubble that they end up trapping her in, that's just kind of, that's a little bit hard for me to, to buy. Hey, Commander Corbo, I just wanted to check with you real quick. There aren't any time portal, time anomalies uh, in the area, are there? Can you just scan for that real quickly? Yeah, small one. Oh my gosh, geez. Uh, hey, is that ship still in the area? Can you hail that ship again? Maybe we can get some more information. I'm starting to think maybe there's some truth to that guy's story. All right, mister, we see this time anomaly developing now, so if you really are from the future, as I'm starting to think maybe you are, what can you tell us about the future? Well, you know, an artificial intelligence actually did take over the world, and everybody has a full-time job now, but creativity is sort of frowned upon. Anyways, I got my hands on some time travel technology, and I figured, why don't I just go back in time and pick up where you left off? You know, you're about to be swept into the future on this wild time adventure, this time travel space adventure, so I figured, you know, I'll just go back to the moment that you disappear, and I'll just pick up from there. But I overshot the mark a little bit, and now we're having this amazing conversation. It's really, it's kind of a blast. Anyways, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take over your show. You're gonna take over my show. <laughs> That'll be the day. All right, well, anyways, it's just a little time anomaly, guys. Nothing to worry about. But, you know, speaking of time travel, I want to know... Why exactly can't Dr. Burnham just get back into the Red Angel suit? They didn't really explain that very well, especially not in this episode. I think they sort of explained it in the previous episode, but that kind of bothered me about this episode. Uh, you know, the suit's right there, she's right there. I don't know. Anyways, uh, it was a pretty cool thing to see the whole uh, time anomaly open up above Dr. Burnham. 
Okay, guys, I also have to mention that there were some time-traveling sphere-type things in Star Trek Enterprise, and it's really interesting to wonder if they're going to get into that at all. I feel like they're probably not, but, I mean, time-traveling spheres, it's just, uh, it's so close, it seems like they should really get into that at some point, but... They're probably not going to, like I said. Anyways, uh, it was also really interesting in this episode the way Michael says at one point, maybe what we need to do is send the sphere into the river of time itself instead of fighting it anymore. And, you know, I was wondering what, what exactly does that mean? How do you do that? And Ash Tyler, of course, right away says, oh, you mean send it so far into the future that it can't hurt us. Now, to me, it's just like, that's an impossible jump to make. How could he possibly know that that's what she meant? It's just a little bit hard for me to believe that. It, it doesn't feel like well-written fiction. For the most part, I'd say this episode was well-written. Some of the dialogue was a little bit shaky. Uh, I really didn't like Tilly's little joke scene in the beginning with uh, New Newton's uh, Laws of Physics. It seems like every episode now, they have to have Tilly go on and on and interrupt or, you know, start talking when it's just incredibly inappropriate. And, you know, I'd say the theme of this episode really was time and the inescapability of time. And here we have this very time-sensitive issue. They're trying to save all sentient life in the known and unknown universe. And Tilly's like, oh, yeah, I'll just start rattling on about Newton's laws and which one's my favorite. And Saru has to interrupt her and just, you know keep going with the important conversation with the captain. She's interrupting the captain. So it just seemed like, come on, guys, this isn't funny. It's not working. Why every episode do we have to do this? Uh, also, guys, I just want to point out that this whole thing about the AI can't evolve unless it can get to the sphere technology, the sphere archive, that just doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, evolution is something that all life is constantly doing. You can't escape it, just like you can't escape time. And the thought of something not being able to evolve without getting some random thing, it's just, it's ridiculous. Evolution is something that happens when it needs to happen. And, you know, they just never seem to really understand what evolution is, the writers on Star Trek, on any of the Star Trek shows. I've done a couple of episodes about this before. There was a terrible Voyager episode. There's just tons of episodes where they just mix up what the notion of evolution is with sort of metaphors involving what evolution is. And, you know, it's all well and good to work metaphors into the story and everything, but... Uh, when it just starts to get so loose that it doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, this AI, if it's alive, it will evolve as the situations that it finds itself in require. But it's also sort of ridiculous to think of a singular organism evolving, although it is true that the cells on an organism are evolving. And, you know, there's all these different levels to evolution but, uh, you know, we're talking about one AI. Is it reproducing with other AI? There's so many questions about this AI. It is kind of a lot like Terminator, guys. But, of course, Terminator was a lot like a lot of things that came before it. A lot of science fiction novels, such as the work of Philip K. Dick, among others. Like I was talking about in my last video. Anyways, guys, it's kind of like the, you know, chords for a blues song, a blues progression in music. It's okay if the same artist, uh, or if different artists use the same blues progression. It's, you know, something that you can, you can put your own touch on. And, you know, that's really the question. If, if you put your own touch into it, if you're telling your own story with this idea, with these ideas and these concepts, or if you're just repeating somebody else and just regurgitating something that's already been seen or heard before. You know, there's an element of improv to playing the blues, and there's an element of creating your own thing, even if you're working with a larger structure or sort of skeleton that's been worked with before in science fiction. So I don't have a problem with them doing a story that involves artificial intelligence and time travel, as long as they do something interesting and original and entertaining with it, and I think they are. So I'm going to give them points for that with this episode. 
I'm going to ask everybody to please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, you know, we've recently passed 800 subscribers, which is totally awesome. And we're going for a thousand subscribers now. So please remember to share this video with your friends and enemies. And please subscribe. Leave me a comment letting me know what you thought about this episode and all things Star Trek, The Orville, or comic book related, science fiction related. And, uh, you know, we'll be seeing you in the future. Live long and prosper. Thank you.